Hi, I'm Lisa Faulkner. And I'm Stu Henshaw, Executive Chef for Corn and Cauldron. Should we do it? First of all, onion. Two leeks here. you can be transported back to your granny's kitchen. I've got a pie dish here and I'm just going to pour this into my dish. Look at that. So welcome everyone to another fabulous corn cook along. Today we are joined by none other than celeb chef Lisa Faulkner and the lovely Stu Henschel from Corn, who's going to be uh, sharing all of the latest insights on how fabulous corn products are to cook with, especially when it comes to easy family meals, which is what we're all about, isn't it, Lisa? Absolutely. All, all about easy family meals, things that children can cook with you or along, you know, alongside you, but also something that's not going to take forever and that it's, and it's pretty healthy. So I think we've got most boxes ticked. Tick, 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 tick. Right, is everyone ready? Are we gonna grab our saucepans and spoons and whatever else and get going? Right, today we are cooking. Stu, why don't you tell us? Uh, so today we're gonna do a summer phyllo pie using our corn fillets. Uh, it's a vegetarian dish and we'll talk about how you can make it vegan if you want to. Um, and then we'll go through our mise en place here, which basically means we get all of our bits together, make sure you've got each element there and it'll just ease as we go through and Lisa cooks for you. Yum, I'm just sad I'm not there to eat it at the end. Right, Lisa, let's get going. So I was gonna say, should we check that everybody's got everything that they need, which might be a nice start, and, and to know also, you're in your own kitchen, so you know where everything is. We'll, we won't take it too fast, and just enjoy it. I'm sure that most of you cook pretty much all the time um, and this is just such a lovely recipe and actually the phyllo pastry gives it a really summer feel it's really really lovely um, so we've got our corn fillets first everyone got their corn fillets um, we've got them in our bowl we've got some creme fraiche we've got tarragon garlic an onion two leeks um, white wine in a tumbler. I said I like it in a tumbler. I might quite like to put some ice in there and have a little swig. French um, is quite chic in a tumbler, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> then we've got a little bit of flour, some sunflower oil, some plant-based butter, sunflower butter, yes. haven't we? Um, a stock cube. I think that's pretty much it. Are we all, have we all got everything we need? And salt and pepper. That's a filo pastry. And phyllo pastry, which is in the fridge, so I've forgotten it. Actually, we've got a good question early doors. If the corn fillets are frozen, do you need to defrost them? What do we do, Stu? You don't need to defrost them. You can go straight in from frozen. That's absolutely fine. You can if you've left them on the side and they've defrosted. You can still use them, but from frozen, though it's, it feels slightly different, it's absolutely fine. You're actually going to get the best result from it. So that's, that's absolutely fine. very handy, isn't it? Should we do it? First of all, onion. Oh, I'm just going to throw the onion around. Um, I'm just going to cut it in half and I just cut it in half at the root so that you keep the root on. Then take the, peel the skin off. I usually peel the first two sort of layers. Stu's probably looking at me going, hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it depends, you know, the, the older the onion, the more layers you have to peel back. So if you've got a nice, fresher onion that's just you know um, is, is good to go after one layer and that's great but if you have to keep going until you get to that nice shine off it then, yeah uh, so that's what you've got to do yeah we'll just do that um, but a really lovely tip is that your onion always has has these lines so I always use the the lines of the onion as a guide when you're chopping it so you can just literally sort of chop along the lines if you know what I'm saying does that make sense I thought that was quite a good tip so that you know that you've got a quite a uniform um, chop of an onion. I then cut it in half but you don't have to yeah. and then just chop and then you've got sort of a little uniform or as uniform as you want. Um, take our sunflower oil 
and put that in first. And usually, what I tend to do, what I always think, is that sunflower oil is great for cooking and the butter gives it flavour. So once that oil has sort of warmed up a bit, then you can add your, add your butter. So my, my pan is bubbling away and I'm going to add my onions. So if we all get to the point where we've chopped our onions and add our onions to the pan, and while they are softening, then once you've got, once you've all got your onions in, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Now, the thing with the onions is, you can cook them hard and fast, and then they become quite acrid, quite bitter, I think. And so the way I like to cook them is slow. So turn them down just a little bit, sort of a medium, a medium heat, and let them just sit, because they just, become this lovely caramelized sweet onion which is just delicious so while they are slowly cooking away we can get our leeks prepared um, two leeks here I just chop the top and the bottom and obviously I shouldn't be wasting it and I could be making a nice stock with it yeah 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 so if you had for example if you had a freezer bag yep. and you took these tops and these bottoms and even, not that outer uh, part of the onion, but if you have those slightly darker ones that you don't want to put in the pan yet, if you stick them in a bag, and obviously that's not enough to do anything uh, substantial with, first of all, but if you just leave it there in, in the freezer and you keep adding to it, you have a big bag of all of these trimmings, and then you stick it in with a load of water and just boil it down and you're making your own homemade stock and I, you haven't had to do anything for it. It's such a brilliant idea. And, and the other thing is that, that I tend to do as well because we'll buy a load of leeks and then suddenly you've got stump, some left over. So you can chop them up so that they're ready and put them in the freezer and then they're ready to go. Actually, that was a really interesting question we've had. Someone has said, is it okay to use food from the freezer is it okay to batch cook and freeze stuff it's not it's not unhealthy at all is it not at all no there's 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 nothing in it the only thing that happens when you freeze um when there's air in a packet you get water migration so the, the, the more tight you can pack stuff before it goes into the freezer you've got a vacuum sealer amazing if you don't just make sure you kind of roll it with the bag and then seal it at the end so um, what just the what happens with the the water comes out of it so vegetables and things which have lots of water in it will migrate out of it and, and form these bigger ice crystals which isn't as good right um, but yeah absolutely there's there's nothing nutritionally that's going to that's going to be impacted by freezing or you know batch cooking at the weekend and, and saving it for another day so i'm going to get some garlic here um i've got two cloves um and i'm just going to cut the i cut the base off and then usually my my skin comes off falls off like so sorry am i making a mess no <laughs> my husband <laughs> tells me off all the time for the mess that i make another um, thing with the herbs because they are sort of a light light green and you know they can go brown in the freezer if you chop them up and stick them in some melted butter or olive oil and fill up an ice cube tray and you're ready, you know, you can just pull one out at a time and start cooking with it. Oh, that's very good. We literally stick packets just in. Just stick the packets in. So, um, much better to do that. Um, a little tip that I have, which I find, I don't have a garlic crusher at home, and I find the whole slicing of garlic slightly aggravating. <laughs> so, I use a, a grater, um, and it's one of the most easy things, because I just grate my garlic into the pan. And once you've done it, I don't think you'll ever go back. However, absolutely feel free to chop, crush, smash. Um, Jono, my husband, hates, doesn't like too much garlic. So he'll smash garlic in, use the flavour and then take it out because he doesn't ever want to eat the garlic. So you still get that lovely flavour of garlic, but you don't get that punch that I love so much. So I'm just going to grate in my garlic, or if, you, if you're at home and you don't have a grater, then feel free to chop in, crush in, smash in, whatever you want. So that onion, that garlic, um, the other thing to say is to really, to cook that garlic, let it sit just for a couple of, you know, 30 seconds even, just to infuse, just so that you get a bit of, um, so that it gets cooked through. And then once that stuff, once that is, um, cooking nicely we're going to add our leeks so everybody should have chopped leeks and then add them to the pan Stu if we've diff if we're cooking with corn fillets that have been frozen and then let's say we wanted to batch or 
cook ahead this pie filling and then could we freeze it again and then use it later is that allowed so what i'd say is wouldn't go all the way you'd make your mixture cook it you know uh, and then and then bag it off like that and then when you're ready then you'll be able to stick it into the pan and then do do the phyllo topping but yeah i, I would i'd save the very top for the end yeah I, I also would say to Stu because um cooking with corn is really interesting it takes on the flavors so well it really does but what's really good about it is that you don't need to put it in till the last minute because it takes them very very quickly and if you're making the base you could make the base and stick the fillets in beforehand but it does take up a lot of liquid mm -hmm. doesn't it so just have all your sauce as Stu says ready to go and just as you want to cook it stick your, your corn fillets in put your pastry over the top and, and you're done yeah our wine if we haven't drunk it um, if you get that wine into our pan, it will make a lovely sizzle. I'm just going to put that in and the, st and the stock cube, there you go. which is there, and the stock cube. And then I'm just going to let that reduce. Now you can reduce it by half, you, it's not going to be, it's not really alcoholic, you don't have to worry about that. The alcohol cooks off anyway, which is why you're just going to just reduce reduce it so that you, what you get is that lovely rich flavour, almost like an acid, acidity, which really is gorgeous with the creme fraiche um, and works really well with the sweet leeks. It's just a beautiful, beautiful marriage. Um, so we're just going to let that cook down a little um, and we could get on to the corn. I'm going to add a nice pinch of salt and a crack of pepper. Oh, it's not my usual pepper. This is really exciting. It makes it so worry electric one. Bit of pepper, and and pepper is a spice. And I think we're very much. It's one of those things that we put on food at the end. But it does nearly really need to cook pepper, don't you? Don't you agree that it? One of those things. Put it in. Let it cook. It really it makes such a difference when you sort of see those bits of pepper that people put on. It has no flavour almost. This really suddenly you go, oh, it comes alive. Um, to that now, I'm going to add some creme fraiche. Um, this is the uh, like the oat. Uh, this oat is an version. oat creme. An yeah, oat, oat creme fraiche. Yeah. Um, so if everybody's got their creme fraiche to add that. So I'm just going to stir that through and we should be on quite a nice low heat. It's still hot, it's still bubbling, but not fierce. You don't, you don't want to boil the love out of it, as my husband always says. Lisa, you often have to cook for a crowd, don't you? Because your teens are, are known for bringing friends home with them. Yeah. Do you think this would work? This would work nicely, wouldn't it, if you had a big gang coming around on a Friday or a Saturday night? I think it's one of those dishes that is brilliant and actually quite a sort of showstopper in a way. It looks, I have to say, that the feel of pastry is one of those things that can really elevate a dish from a humble pie to this really pretty dish that you put on the table and everyone thinks you've made a huge effort when you haven't really done that much and that is my sort of cooking. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, it, I think it works really well with the teams. So I'm now just going to get my um, tarragon. Um, tarragon is my favourite, favourite herb. It was my mum's favourite herb. And so it always, always reminds me of her. And I think the lovely thing about cooking and food is that it's like hearing, it's like a song. When you, when you sort of go back to a song that you heard for the first time you can remember what car you were sitting in and whether the rain was pelting down or the sun was shining in and you heard this song and it just you were thinking about this boy that you fell in love with or whatever it was and that song stays with you forever and I think food is the same I think cooking it is the same thing and you can taste something and you can be transported back to your granny's kitchen or you know a time in your life when you know when I was with my mum and that's what tarragon does to me and I think that's really lovely about food so if you sort of had a herb ta believe me tarragon's gorgeous but if you had a herb that you wanted to use that wasn't tarragon you could use dill, dill would be beautiful parsley um, you know once you've done a recipe once 
you can always play around with it. Yeah, make it your own. Make it your own and use use what you love. But I've just sort of gently cut it through and I'm just going to sprinkle that into my sauce. And go as much or as little as you like. We've said two tablespoons, I think. Yeah. Um, and the tarragon is strong. You don't need too much. But once you've made this recipe, as I say, once you've made it once, play with it. Go, actually, I want a bit more. I'll throw in a bit more. Or change your herbs, whatever you want. At this point, my sauce, I think, with those, um, with the corn fillets, I don't think it will need too much flour. I don't think yeah. it needs too much thickening. I mean, this is op it's optional, the quantity there. You don't have to throw it all in. Yeah, so I'm just going to add a type, just, I'm going to add a sort of sprinkling of my flour, probably about a teaspoon. And I'm going to stir that through and cook that through. You want it to be cooked through while it's bubbling so that you cook out that flour. You don't want that sort of floury taste. Um, but it won't take a minute. Perfect. And the corn fillets themselves are gluten free. Right. Um, so, you know, you could sub that for corn flour and that would, that would, that would thicken. And then you just have to look at a gluten free option for, for the topping, whether that be a you know, mashed potato or something like that as well would work. Now that is done, I'm going to turn that off. And I'm just going to add my fillets so that they don't need to, it doesn't need to be completely boiling now because we're just going to sit that in the, in the pie dish and I just wanted to show you. So add your fillets. And have you chopped them up, Lisa, or are you just putting them in whole? This was exactly my question to Stu the <laughs> other day. I said, do we chop them? You can chop them and you can also, you could use the pieces, couldn't you? The corn pieces Yeah, you so, to. you know, we have used an oat creme fraiche and we have used sunflower oil and a plant butter. Uh, if you wanted to make it completely vegan, you could use our vegan pieces and, you know, they cook for the same amount of time and you can, you can put them in at this point as well to make it completely vegan. Um, yeah. Because the phyllo pastry is as well. But what's nice about these mm. is that then you know exactly what you're serving somebody. It's quite nice because you can get a big, you know, you get an actual fillet on your plate and then if anybody else wants to if you have a 17 year old that eats the earth then they may take two but uh, but most people are like oh yeah okay that's my fillet so that's really lovely i've got a pie dish here and i'm just going to pour this into my dish now i should have said and i didn't the time to sort of check the seasoning was just before you poured it in and if there was anything you wanted to add sometimes people want to add a tiny bit more salt or pepper then do that um, but it is pretty bang on this recipe Stu amazing um, so I'm going to add my fillets into my dish and they really do take up this lovely, lovely sauce. So what you've got is your dish of beautifulness. It looks so pretty. It really does. It's really lovely in summary. And what I was going to say as well is you could really add pasta to this, couldn't you? Make a yeah. lovely sort of carbonara -y yeah, dish would be really lovely. Well. Um, I've now made a mess. No, it's okay. I'm sorry. You. Have you? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I've got a little tip here as well. Another tip. If you find your chopping board stick, get a piece of either your dishcloth or a wet piece of kitchen towel, put it on your um, surface, and then when you put your board on top, it stops it from slipping everywhere, um, which is just really handy. There we go. Uh, and now, thank you. And that's, that's pretty solid. Got our phyllo pastry, which is a wonder. Uh, you have to work fast with phyllo, so make sure as well you've got your melted butter. The, the only thing with phyllo is that you do, as I said, you have to work quickly because it dries out. So if you were doing something, you could you can use a wet tea towel and wrap it in that, and it will last in the fridge. Um, we do so much with phyllo pastry. Uh, it's one of those things that is just, it's just very very versatile really good as a topping when you don't want a heavy pie you want a light yeah, pie that's why it's perfect for summer isn't it absolutely so i'm going to use about four sheets of phyllo doesn't matter you can use more or less so um 
I've got my pastry brush and I'm just going to brush my my pastry with the butter. I'm just going to then cut my pastry. I'll actually cut all of them, um, but I wanted to show you the, the first bit. So I'm going to cut in half and then into six. Now you could do fours, it's fine. I'm just doing smaller ones. And then you get your what, the first leaf. Just scrunch it up and put it in the corner of your dish. The scrunching again is another job that Little Fingers would love. Absolutely. And a really good way to get kids to see this is pastry. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's sensory, isn't it? Because you're going, really? And you say, yeah. And it tastes so lovely. And, and how it changes, the fact that it changes from this soft thing to, to something really lovely and crispy. Now, now Stu, can we over scrunch with this pastry or can we be quite flexible? I think don't, you don't squeeze it into a ball. You kind of want the hot air to get around it so it all goes lovely and crispy and you don't have any un, un, uncooked bits of pastry in the centre of it. How are your uh, squinchings going? How's everyone? Oh my goodness, look at them. They're all looking so good. Awesome. Do we need, I think we're there with that. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Right, let's have a look. Can you see that oh, one? Let's slip out your hands. It does look so pretty. I love that one over there. Gosh, they look gorgeous. Really, really Thank lovely. You. Thank you. Right, let's go. Go on. Put yeah. it, let's put it in the oven. Yeah. And that goes on a nice 200 for about, I would say, you say 20 I'd minutes. I'd say 15, 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. Your it oven... really isn't that long, is it? No, and every oven varies. So I think with all recipes, always I would take, so if something says take 20 minutes, always cook it for 15 and then check it because my oven at home is really hot. Some are, are much cooler and you need to do it for 25. You'll see when it's done because it goes lovely and golden. Um, and the corn, it takes no time at all. It's like 12 minutes to actually so cook, So it's 12 isn't it? minutes if it goes into a hot sauce and you just, it doesn't even have to be boiling, just simmering through for 12 minutes. So our, our, around that sort of 12 to 15 minutes mark, they're all going to be cooked anyway. And the good thing about, you know, uh, the corn products is, it's, it's, you know, it's already cooked. Stu, tell us some more summery family meals we could cook with those fillets. Oh. Um, so... Uh, There's a baby. I literally saw this lovely little baby. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Oh. Yeah, so super versatile. As we Sorry, said with that, no, no, no. As we said with, the, with that pie, there are, there are the different things you can do with it. You, obviously, there's tomato bases you can do with it. Um, you know, there's the sliced fillets as well, or you know, you can you can let them come to, chop them up, put them into salads. Um, you know, if you make a sort of an oil-based marinade, you'd be able to put them onto the barbecue once they're, they're defrosted and get Ooh, some chars on it. Any, any, you know, it's just that there's a slight difference in terms of the cooking methods, but you know, you can su you can sub, you know, traditional chicken with 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 the fillets in in a lot of those in those cases. And I'm just loving the lack of defrosting needed. That's going to transform my life. It is amazing, isn't it? I was going to also ask you because some of the fillets, the corn fillets, are vegan and some of them are veggie. That's right. Yeah. So the ones that we used. So we've used, so, so the, actually, so the corn fillets, they're all vegetarian at the moment. And the reason is, it's a combination of a couple of proteins. So you have mycoprotein, which is the, the main ingredient. But in order for that to, to bind together and to get that awesome texture, it also uses egg whites in it as well. Uh, and so those are the vegetarian products. Right. And, and that's what we, we came out with. We started releasing products in the 80s. We've been around for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously we're wanting to, to, to get to a place where all of our products are vegan. Um, and uh, so we are doing that. So we needed to replace the egg white. And egg white is, is amazing. It's actually more than one protein in it. So it's not an easy swap. Um, but we do have lots of great vegan products which use uh, potato proteins um, which, which, which does that binding and also gluten can do that binding as well. Gluten, while we think of gluten free, it is, it is a positive for people who are celiac yeah. or, or, or have uh, you know, slight intolerances, but gluten is a, pro a protein so going fully gluten free means you're actually you know, do, you know, taking out some of that protein out of your diet. Yeah. It's not always a good thing to be, to be going for. Um, so yeah, the vegan products tend to use those other proteins in order to bind them together. 
Yeah, I, I, I know chickpea water is one of those things that people are substituting for egg whites. Yeah, yeah, you can do really interesting stuff with uh, really aquafaba. That's uh, it, aquafaba. Yeah, so you can whip that um, with, with sugar to make your meringues and things like that. Yeah, amazing. Really, yeah. I, th I think what's incredible, my whole, my sister and my nieces, um, we're all very close family and they're all vegan. And it used to, it would have been, I would say four or five years ago, you'd be thinking, oh, what, what am I going to make? And, you know, we're two chefs, uh, or, or cooks, one chef and one cook. And we still sort of go, oh gosh, what are you going to make? You sort of start panicking a bit. Now there's no need to panic. Every, there are so many recipes, and I've, we've learned so much so fast about a plant-based diet. Um, and I think it's absolutely fascinating that now we will cook with it without even yeah. thinking about it. I think one of the main main worries people have is that they're not going to be getting enough protein in their diet. Yeah. And actually, it's really it's it's true that you have to you have to look for it. And you know, within the plant kingdom, there are only a couple of things that are complete proteins, and that's the, the combined with the nine amino acids that our bodies don't naturally make themselves mm. in order to be healthy, um, which you can get from combining them, making sure you're getting nuts and grains in the right proportions and things. And that's that's a lot of work. But there are a couple of things which are uh, which are complete protein. One of them is soya, um, but obviously there's a lot of soya intolerance and people may not want to eat it for certain ethical reasons. But then there's also microprotein, which is a complete protein as well. So you can ensure by swapping out all of those proteins from, for, for corn products, one day a week, two days a week, or completely moving over, you're still getting that complete protein. So clever. Now, Natasha's got a question. Natasha, do you want to take your mic, release your mute button so we can hear you? Hi there, I was just wondering whether there's going to be any more corn products that are going to be aimed for the children. So my daughter really loves the corn rawsoms that have recently come out. Is there going to be some other shape or something? She suggests a unicorn, calling it a unicorn. Of course. That's brilliant. Love that. Yeah, I love that as an idea. Unicorns. That'd be great. Yeah, I think she needs to copyright it quick. Yeah, I mean those those, those awesome products. Uh, they're, they're, this is an awesome. It's an awesome product, and I love. You know, even at home, I, I copy the the you know the packaging. You know, with the mashed potato volcanoes and the ketchup lava and all of that stuff, and the kids kids love it. Um, yeah, and obviously we have the nuggets as well, which 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 my kids adore as well, and we've got veggie and vegan ones as well, breadies or crunchy and. All different things. I, I think they are brilliant. I, I have to say that the nuggets and the the crispy corn, just to have it, you know, you can put it in a bun and have it like a crispy chicken sandwich almost. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. But with corn. And I think it's not just thinking about them just as, you know, just something that you just bang in the oven. You can actually use them and like we've done today and, you know, add them into dishes and, you know, still have that cooking experience of, you know, getting getting the sauce really unctuous and delicious and then, then adding them in in order to give that, you know, those, those other flavours and those textures. Um, and yeah, it's just it's about yeah. knowing what to do with them, really. We're big fans of making sweet and sour with the nuggets. They're so good. Ooh, that's a good, good idea. idea. Yeah. Yum. Delicious. I'm starving already. How's it smelling in the oven? S smelling good. It's smelling pretty good. Yeah, I don't want it to go much more in terms of the filo. Oh, yeah, it's look so at sad. that. So there, there it is. If I tip it, if I hold, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm getting very used to this. If I tip it forward, yes, then you can see. Yum. I mean, it's bubbling away here. It's, uh, it's got that little noise that you just go, I can't wait to eat it. Insta-worthy, it's so beautiful. Definitely Insta-worthy. And also really lovely, as, as I was saying, you know, you get a big serving spoon and you find your fillet. And so you've got your portions are already portioned up, which I think is, is a lovely thing. Um, how are all of yours? Are they out yet? Are they doing okay? Anyone got a pie to share with the group? Already. <laughs> See one coming. Oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. Oh, and another one. Oh, they're all coming. Oh my gosh. I mean, how That's quick is that? Like we're giving birth. Yes. They're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving birth to our summer pies. Um, they all look amazing. They look fantastic. They really do. Showstoppers. People have really, I, I, I mean, it, I don't know. I, I hope that you're sort of coming away thinking, 
I've got something that I would definitely do again because also when you dig into it I think you'll be really you will really love the taste of it I really really enjoyed it I enjoyed it I enjoy eating everything but it was it was really gorgeous Okay, well, well done, everyone. And thank you, Lisa, and thank you, Stu. You've been absolutely brilliant at talking us all through it. I know I'm definitely going to be making it now. You made it look so easy. Thank you. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, any questions, please, you know, let us know. And I, I just hope you've had a lovely time. We've had a lovely time yes, here. Yes, great. Okay, well. enjoy eating your pies, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Happy cooking, happy eating. Thank, Thank you. you very much.